Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Red Dusk. A world in which the USSR never fully collapsed. But today we're playing as someone's favorite uh, nation. Well, I don't know about that, but we're playing as Saddam Hussein because Saddam has been called a lunatic killer tyrant. And yet he keeps going. He's a guy. But they do have a unique focus tree, and uh, I've already played this nation, not this nation, but like I played this USSR once so far in this campaign, or in this mod. Ugh, I can speak. I've played as Yugoslavia once, so I figured let's take a different ideological twist. A new era for Iraq. It is well known by every Iraqi that the period of the 1980s up to the 2000s were not a very good time for Iraq. There have been and still are sanctions by the USA, internal conflicts against minorities, and the rebellion of the Kurdish people. In fact, the Kurds are conducting terrorist operations aimed at destroying and damaging Iraqi infrastructure and factories. Although times may seem difficult, we will be able to bring Iraq back from among the great Middle Eastern powers. This will be a new era for us in 20 years of Saddam's rule. Saddam Hussein has been the leader of Iraq for 21 years, and it must be admitted that he has made mistakes. One of his biggest mistakes was that Iranian-Iraqi war that dragged the Iraq into its current situation. But he has also done good things, such as preserving the identity of the nation and its culture. Saddam's next step is to right every single mistake he made and lead Iraq into its golden age. Also, if you see this video, it could get taken down someday. Like, I'm not joking. Like, I've already got a strike against my channel. I've gotten demonetized on my channel so far. So, me talking about Saddam, especially after <clears throat> the time of recording when this video comes out, like, the day after 9-11, uh, I could probably get kicked off YouTube, maybe. But then again, it's YouTube. What do you expect? Uh, there's foreign policy stuff we can do here. Um, we definitely want to help the Republic of Sudan. Can we send you volunteers? So with all these different guys here, Liberian Civil War, Syria, Sierra Leone, Ethiopia, Eritrean War, we could potentially help them out. I mean, we don't care about either side, really. But we're here to make ourselves better. We got quite a bit of infantry. So here's the templates before I do anything else. We don't have enough guns. We don't have enough of anything. Um, we're all, the tank divisions are like this. There were other tank divisions that were like this, which is almost the same thing, but I decided to go with one way. We have some sort of, uh, m infantry fighting vehicle, infantry division, but it's relatively slow, so I didn't like it. Um, and then we have also these guys here too, basically the same idea, but different. Um, then we have the infantry divisions, we're gonna use 20 combo, this is pretty good. Logistics are alright. Uh, recon's okay, engineer companies. And then we have elite forces, even though they're really not elite at all, so... Um, so that being said, that's why our guys are not looking so hot right now. Um, uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna send you two on over. There's not a lot of mountains here as far as I remember. And that's okay. You guys, one, two. Republican guard control, whatever it is. Come here. Do we have any air bases? No, we cannot send any planes, unfortunately. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh-huh. Uh, Saddam is also a leader himself. Ah, oh, screw it. Saddam, can, you can lead. Welcome to Sudan. And now we are down in Ethiopia. Actually, in this case, it doesn't really matter. As long as we win the war, that's all that matters to us. Alright, so we have all this stuff going on. Now choose a side, relatively soon, to make sure that we do win. One man's hero. It was early morning in Mosul, when the old man Ibrahim entered the city market. He was returning from the mosque when he decided to buy some fresh food. As he entered, he could see that the market was rather quiet. Only the local food sellers were there, and even they were just preparing for the day. And of course, there it was, one thing that couldn't escape anyone's view, the mural of Saddam Hussein painted all over the side of the building overlooking the market. Ibrahim stood there for a second. He remembered the war, the trenches, the orders not to retreat, and even the faces of Iranian soldiers charging at him. He remembered Saddam's numerous speeches from that time, all talking about a great victory that was nowhere to be seen. He remembered everything. Even now, he lives a rather good life. Not much, but good. Even tough, he remembered that due to the sanctions, he won't be able to get anything that, he was, that was made in the West, but that didn't bother him very much. As long as he didn't see Saddam face to face, he'd be alright. And there's another man's tyrant. Ooh. The propaganda machine. Iraq our homeland is a strong and united nation, but our enemies every day continue to try to destroy us from within. Turning our own people and the Arabs against us. But Saddam knows it. In fact, he has devised a plan to put an end to these foolish attempts by our enemies. As plan inaugurates the greatest invention of all modern Iraq, namely the propaganda machine. This machine will allow us to establish an even stronger relationship and unity with the Iraqi and Arab people. Thanks to the use of propaganda, the morale of these people and the nation will rise and they will know the name of a single great leader. 
He is Saddam Hussein. Ah, Saddam, he's back at it again. Now we're trying to build some cities for the people. Yeah, for the people. So, uh, actually, I didn't talk about this at all, but Nation of Snakes, I do want to read this one as well. Saddam has been the president of Iraq since 79. When he became president, he implemented the, into the government and the country pro-militaristic policies and economic reforms. Saddam secures power perch military officers and co-conspirators who try to integrate Iraq into Syria. Saddam didn't like this because his dream is to become the undisputed leader of the Islamic world and also because he was a nationalist. The 7th of January, 1979, in, when the Tehran government was overthrown by the Iranian revolution, Saddam saw this event as a potential threat to his government. In 1980, Saddam declared war on Iran with NATO's military support. <clears throat> this war was known as Qadisiyah. The war continued for eight years, and it's only led to the misfortunes for Iraq, with the death of almost 35,000 Iraqi men and the death of nearly 200,000 civilians. It's okay. The final outcome was a ceasefire imposed by the UN. Today, Iraq is in an economic crisis, and is still suffering the consequences of the Gulf War, and it has an embargo by the US and the whole NATO. And moreover, it is in constant clashes with the Kurdish minorities. In fact, the Kurdish minorities launched several terrorist attacks against the Iraqi factories and cities. The Kurds are wrecking havoc in areas in northern Iraq, and this problem, if not solved, could lead to a war of independence or a more serious consequence. Iraq is in a very bad situation. The economic system is in ruins. The military units are undisciplined and unable to resist a war. The factories are in very bad shape with only a few functioning, and the government is very weak with low influence. The hope of the Iraqi people and of Iraq is in the hands of Saddam Hussein. Will Saddam be able to establish a state of the good Iraq? Or will his dream die with him? Only time can tell. Welcome to hell, my friends. No guides. And thank you to the mod developers. It seems like a very, very well-made mod. I, do, I will say that. I'm enjoying it very much. Also, there's only one option. We can only do historical, so we're on historical. We'll see what happens. Good job, Saddam. Give it up. See what you can do here. Propaganda machine swords of Iraq. Two off-map cities? I think those would be very useful because we are completely out of guns. Dogs of the West. Oh, dogs. Scum. Kurdish issue. Economic restructuring. And then we have bolster the military, which wouldn't be bad either. You know what? That's a seven-day focus. The Middle East is a dangerous place. Whether it's from foreign powers competing for resources or local nations with diplomatic disputes, the war is never too far away. It's a duty of our government to keep our borders safe and secure, and, our own, and only our armed forces can guarantee that. So what else do we have here? In the faith of the, of the new millennium, Saddam has increased the a propaganda machine to increase the populace's trust in Iraq and spread the goals of a regime to the peoples of Iraq. Thanks to propaganda with falling effects, more political power and ideology drift defense, better division attack and defense and division, probably I assume organization, 5% military factory speed, civilian war support, cost of propaganda, factory output, and consumer goods. So we lose political power for that, but when removed, effects of political power gain and drift defense will increase by 5%, not bad. Propaganda costs increase, costing less 2% factory output and consumer goods, hmm. decrease propaganda resources. Dogs of the West. Weekly war support goes up. We can destroy all the consumer goods we have. Scum of the Earth. Swords of Iraq. T Division recovery rate, attack and defense will increase by 5%. Future lies in the military. Weekly manpower, huh? Aid Iraq's future. Causing. Huh. For an United Arab World. More organization recovery rate. Saddam Iraq Savior. More, more sports stability, military factory construction speed. More consumer goods. Saddam, an example for the youth. Weekly manpower. Army experience gain. Nationalism goes up. Study for the future of Iraq. Here's propaganda resources. <clears throat> well, we'll do it once. Why not? Consumer goods. Who needed consumer goods? We'll just conquer whatever we need, right? Right. How are we looking? So since we're down here, I think we'll do okay. Um, we definitely want to spend our 20 political power where we can. Both of the military. Oh, there it is. Um, we definitely want to go with Ethiopian the Eritrean War. And we're going to back Ethiopia. You get attacked too, huh? There you go. See what you can do. Hopefully you can win. Okay, maybe not. I don't see president resigns. It's fine. Whatever. Um, Swords of Iraq. The Iraq are green homeland, although small in terms of territory compared to its neighbors. We boast two peculiarities. The people, patriotic and brave, and the army, one of the most competent in all of the Middle East. And, of course, Saddam. Our beloved leader is always hatching plans to make our country grow and prosper more and more. One of his most recent ideas is the propaganda machine, or as the name suggests, a ministry that distributes propaganda throughout the country. Currently, 
It's main task is to entice young Iraqis to voluntarily enroll in the armed forces and to raise the morale of all land, sea, and air units. If we continue like this, the Middle East will fear us. Nothing is more frightening than an army willing to do anything for its leader. Absolutely. Uh, future lies in the military. Future lies in the military. This is the phrase that is written on every poster around every city, countryside, and urban center of Iraq. And many other mottos are written on as many posters across the nation. This is due to Saddam's propaganda machine. In fact, its purpose is to incentivize every man in Iraq who is old enough to serve to join our armed forces, army, navy, air force, anyone to defend our country. Slogan was chosen to make Iraqi youth understand that they are our future, and that they are the future of Iraq, and that they must fight for its greatness and prosperity, as any brave citizen would. Stabilize the pushing. There you go. How are we doing down here? Let the tanks go in, hopefully, and do okay. Maybe not. I'm not like our divisions are that great. Sentry leap here. There you go. Dreams of a United Arab Nation. Weekly manpower goes up, which is very strong. Or dogs of the West. Of all the enemies that approach our sacred nation, the chief among them are all the three devils of the West. All shall forever be damned to the hells by millions of Iraqis. The Zionists in Israel, for who years have expelled thousands of ethnic Palestinians and have tarnished Arab unity and honor. God, I'm never going to get this monetized. I'll probably get kicked off. The Americans who have backed these <coughs> Jewish <coughs> vipers for decades, profiting off the suffering of our people and the people of the Islamic realm. And finally, the Kuwaitis, the false oligarchs right on our border who have had their greedy hands on the black gold pulsing through our vast deserts. So, and southern, there's more words down here, but there's no scroll thing, so uh, it is what it is. Keep it up, Abdul Kanbar. A cool in Azerbaijan. He's already learning quite a bit. Learn. Educate yourself. Good. For a fearless leader, of course. Mm. Dogs of the West. No, dreams of greater Iraq. That wouldn't be bad, but in all honesty, defense is okay. This is we get more weekly manpower. That's just too strong to not choose. There's one single massive flaw to point to when deciphering the complex history of Arabia, one fault, one source of all the mis miseries which have plagued our lands for the past few centuries, it is the non existence of a United Arab nation. The Arabic people have not seen a golden age ever since the days of the Caliphates. However, we did come close with the ideas of Nasir and Ba'atis forefathers. But Nasir is gone, and we must carry on the legacy of our mentors in unifying our brothers and sisters into one grand state, for this is the only way in which we shall truly prosper. And I know I'm sure I'm saying the words wrong, but still. See, daily political power, weekly manpower, more attack and defense will increase by 5%. Effects of war support, stability, military factory, construction speed will... Uh, uh, propaganda costs will increase. We can do that one. We can use probably one more attack and defense and whatnot. There you go, that'll be fine. You guys actually win here. Can you actually keep it stable here, maybe? No, okay then. Well, I guess you're going up north then. Treaty of Vienfin. Pretty normal. Nice job. And I'll honestly, I think I'm going to do this instead. You guys both come up here. Do that. You are going to be charismatic. Time military seizes power. Very cool. So, did we do Sudanese Sudan War? We're going to do this. Please go ahead. Um. Oh crap, which one? Republic of the Sudan. This is Sudan Liberation Peoples. Central Sudan Military's Government. Sudan's Peoples Liberation Army. Oh, so that, yeah, Sudan Peoples in the southern region. So we want back Sudan. Yeah. Oops, but this stuff is fine. And then what? Saddam's called personality. We lose political power, we get better consumer goods, but we get weekly stability. I think that's worth it. Cost of propaganda decisions decreases. Our great leader, Saddam Hussein, the father of the nation, the grand provider, avenger of the Arab world against the Western menace. These are some of the many titles attributed to our leader, a man who has for years endeared the heritage of millions of Iraqis in his endless search for glory and power, searches which have contributed to the ever-present propaganda industries in Iraq. The government has for years ensured the constant stream of pro-Hussein rhetoric in every single show, every single movie, in every single magazine, every single news network, and every single government broadcast, demonstrating a vast network of our works in keeping the people happy under Sudan's rule and loyalty to Sudan, and intend to keep it that way for as long as Iraq stands, of course. 
can you actually win here? Maybe with our support, yeah. With you guys, I want you to help out here. Oh, they attack us, nice. I think it makes the most sense if we do attack here, though. I don't think we can get any equipment, can we? Nah, we're all empty and everything here. We're on our own, everybody. Just go in. See what happens. Uh, oh, you lost. Not good, my friends. If you attack by yourself, you're probably going to lose, huh? Uh, they still have a bite here, too. It's not good. What's next? The army. Okay. Um, contest no fly zone, construct air defenses, rebuild the Iraqi navy, reform the Iraqi army, and get increased monetary incentives, more attack and recovery rate. Division upkeep goes down. Strange. A lot more attack. Prioritize the Republican Guard. More organization and attack. The Loyal Army of Saddam. Us. Uh, hmm. And this one. This one. We'll prioritize the Republican Guard, because why not? Our traditional army is weak, corrupt, and unmotivated. Relying on them for any major offensive or defensive operations would be a mistake, with the performance of both the Iran and Iraq War and the Gulf War being so far best. Instead, we must invest into our loyal Republican Guard, which consists of the most elite troops out there with the best weapons we have to offer. Is that really worth it, though? Because you get, what? So in total, if you go with this route, 5% organization, 5% attack, 10% organization, 10% attack. That's it. Here, though, you get 10% recovery rate, 5% defense, 10% more attack, 5% more organization. I think you get more with the reform of the Iraqi army, in all honesty. Uh, the Iraqi army makes up the backbone of armed forces, bearing the brunt of the combat in any potential conflict. However, despite its important role, it's uh, poorly equipped and trained, the funding option being misappropriated, and higher ranks being filled with low puppets instead of competent commanders. It's time to perform a purge of the high command and conduct a reform of the entire system. Get in there. We're losing too hard that we have to get involved now. job. Um, I do want to make an encirclement. Probably enough. Passes away. Cool. Well, maybe not cool, but whatever. We could potentially get encircled here, too. It's not ideal, but whatever. For the United Arab World. Eh. War sports ability military factory construction speed increased by 5%. Hmm. Weekly manpower. Horse press ability, factory construction speed. Uh, increased re resources. Political power. How much do we get right now? Point, oh my god, 0.15. Over militarization. Kurdish rebels are killing us. We're doing the best we can, y'all. As long as the borders are covered, that's what we care about the most. Range continues. Hey, Saddam, how's it going? Lessons from Desert Storm. So what do we need here? Um, we rule the skies, or operations in the shade. Oh, so we don't even need this film. So, contest no fly zone. The no fly zones proclaimed by the coalition forces prevent our airports from operating over substantial parts of Iraq. This prevents our military from performing any significant operations against the Kurds and severely restricts our capabilities in a potential conflict. While losses will be inevitable, it's time that our pilots fight back against the Western menace that haunts over our own skies. Decisions and contests with no fly zone will become available. Our tribe. Oh, whoopsie. I should have invested in them. You guys, looks like you're doing okay. What else do we got here? Congo, Liberian War. Uh, I can't tell who's close to even winning. What's this? Eagle West. Economic community of West African states is an economic and political union consisting of multiple West African states. Also serves as a peace keeping force. Oh crap. Oh, uh, this is not good for us. 
We invested in them. Um, yeah, this is not ideal. Uh, construct air defenses. Unfortunately, our airports is no match against coalition forces, being both quality and quantity. However, a scale of wars have proven potent, potent air defenses can deter even the most deadly airports. By constructing an elaborate network of modern air defense systems based around our population centers, coalition aircraft will have to exercise much greater caution when entering our airspace. And we have won in Ethiopia. We have made sure that the and Goal actually won too, so we made sure I uh, got that too. Um, but now it's quite interesting to see here. Uh, this stuff we'll we'll figure out when they start winning harder, because um, it's impossible to tell right now. Sierra Leone, isn't it like around here? This is Liberia. Where is Sierra Leone? Sierra. Oh. Um. Diamond profits. I like that idea. But you guys are over here, volunteers from these guys. It looks like these guys are gonna win down here. Um. Let me try it. Insert lower. Who do we support? I guess you guys are Republic of Sierra Leone, Revolutionary United Front. Um, we prefer these guys, but we're not strong enough to do that, so we're probably going to go with uh, you guys. Can you see any volunteers? One division only? Oh, that sucks. Well, oh, time to go in, guys. But this whole thing here, so. We've got this. Contest No-Fly Zone. A strict no-fly zone has been enforced over large sections of our nation by the United States and its allies since the early 90s. Regular precision strikes and bombing runs have decimated our air defenses and infrastructure. It's time to reorganize our tactics and begin to put up stiffer resistance so we make this no-fly zone more costly than it's worth. So we got all these stats here. So such a rock is okay-ish. Really, so we're going to go with the guide first. To increase chances of success when launching air superiority missions, improve air defenses and intelligence first. Better intelligence gives you more time to counter coalition campaigns, and decisions to move air defenses, create decoys, and bury aircraft will increase your chances of countering coalition campaigns. So, airspace in general. There's no fly zone in the regions that's in effect until the airspace is considered safe or air or operative. Air defense. It enables to counter coalition strikes and bombing missions in the region, making them more costly. And intelligence. Intelligence networks will make or consist of both radar sites and ground operatives, and will warn of us of major coalition operation, operations in advance. So, the continued degradation of our airports uh, by coalition aircraft is bound to have an effect sooner ra rather than later. If we do not manage to clear out airspace within the next few years, it's likely that our air force will not be able to recover in such an environment. So, And to, to, for all this, I do want to go with We Rule the Sky, so basically we're locked out of doing the army until later, which kind of sucks. But it's a good goal that we have here. I do like what the devs have done here. So we're locked out of that because we can still do the economy, we can still do the Kurdish issue. Um, so we'll see. Mm, I guess up next, economic restructuring. The last decade has been devastating for economy with infrastructure and disrepair and trade severely restricted. To get a country back on track, we must reorganize our economic sector, even if it means hiring previously dismissed advisors. Looking okay. And so for this, we want more intelligence and air defenses. <clears throat> must replace our damage and wear air defenses with new equipment. Manned by fresh and capable recruits, and of course there's up here too. We can task our jet fighters with contesting coalition aircraft in the area. If we do this without having significant air defense or intelligence coverage in the air region, we'll suffer heavy losses. So we should focus on one area at a time. We we'll expand our intelligence networks by forming new radar and sensing sites and hiring new ground informants. Um, so maybe we do southern Iraq or central Iraq. What do we do centrally rock? It's only cost five. Centrally rock. Too many days. So maybe we want to make sure centrally rock is completely safe first. So centrally rock, expand intelligence. And we'll do southern Iraq. Central and southern. Because I don't want to do north Iraqi Kurdistan uh, because there's a lot of terrorists there. So if anything, we're definitely going to do centrally rock and then southern Iraq. I guess we can do intelligence here too. Um, eh, we'll try it anyways, why not? Good job for showing up. Saddam wants more fun. Well, in a moment. Hopefully you guys can win here. Hoping to make a mistake. But you never know. Oh, also we're fighting in here, that's why I'm not super worried about it. Against Judah? Judah? Jabba? Disaster in Paris. Oh no. Well, would you look at that? And they're dead! Yay, an eternal dictatorship. Good job, guys. Good job, Republic of the Sudan. Omar al-Bashir. You sound like our neighbors, anyways. The UK forces are moving in. Can they actually win here? 
Good job, Saddam. A pat on the back to our grand leader here. Propaganda machine, too. That also does give more political power, which I do like, too. And more division, tech, and defense. Alright, economic restructuring. Are you tired? Wrong. Come on, do better. Consider alternative trade powers, or partners. Increase oil production, which is absolutely insane. And modern refiners, or diversify the economy of two civvies, and utilize Kurdish farmland. Grant partial autonomy? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I definitely will locate the insertion of strong points. That's really freaking strong. Destroyed, destroyed infrastructure? Or rebuild it? Um, I don't mind doing that. That might help us out. Uh, rebel destroyed infrastructure. The bombing campaigns of the 90s left our infrastructure in dire conditions. Power and communication lines have irregular failures, with sections of the nation being disconnected entirely. While what is left of our road rail, rail network is in disrepair. <clears throat> and we want the nation to prosper. We must start by rebuilding what has been destroyed and is subsequently left abandoned. Sudan won. Who could have seen that one coming? Look at all that people we have now. Nice. Good stuff. So we're operational, operational, safe, operational. Damaged. Uh huh. So we do this, 54% chance of winning. Do this, 42% chance. So we gotta wait. Um, we have I, I, this guy. It's really hurting our compliance. We're actually losing compliance in Iraqi Kurdistan, which is really good for air and army XP. We might choose this guy instead. We'll see. I chose this guy for more political power. It doesn't help out that much, really. Um, military command, mil uh, military defense, infantry tech and defense. Um, I want to do that, but I don't mind hurting ourselves just a little bit more. I like. Uh, oh wait, I want more power. Oh, oh well, look at that. More instability in Yugoslavia. Well, so be it then. We're coming back over here. I want more army XP. We need it. I don't think you can win with just another division here, but I could be wrong. Belgrade Revolution. Very nice. Who knew the British and Iraqis would be working together in Africa? And this way we get another city too. And more construction speed. Because right now we got some really bad modifiers. Western embargo. Really bad. Kurdish rebels. God awful. Oh, Kurdistan could rebel. Oh, we should probably do that next. Strain infrastructure sucks. Oil producers, though. Dreams of the United Arab Nation. Saddam's called personality. Our broken arm is not good either. Our attack is bad. No fly zones are really bad. Destroyed Air Force. God awful. So I guess Iraq's. Uh, Kurds are next. The Kurdish people have always been a thorn in the Middle East, regularly resisting and rebelling against the rulers since the 19th century. Today, we suffer the misfortune of the residency on our territory, with northern Iraq effectively being an autonomous region independent of the central government. So I'm bringing them into the fold one way or another. Yeah, pretty much. Millennium Summit. <clears throat> Good job, guys. And... Uh, I don't think you can win here. You can try and... Oh, you popped the division dead. So that's okay. 48% <clears throat> is not ideal. Because right now, as you see, compliance is at nothing, which is not good. So we'll get a race with all the uh, Kurdish crap. Hey, computing nice. Research speed is nice, too. And we're going to look at the insurgent strong points in Iraq, especially in the north, near the border with Turkey and Syria. There is a Kurdish minority. Kurds have been a problem for Iraq and its people for many years because of the question of their independence. With Saddam's regime, the situation has worsened, and now the Kurds are attempting various attacks on infrastructure and the population. The first step is getting rid of them as they locate Kurdish strongholds. With their localized HQs, they won't be able to hide from us. A nation of snakes. It was very quiet morning in the guard duty for young soldier Ahmed. Uh, he joined the Iraqi army following the footsteps of his father, who was a soldier both during the Iran, Iraq War, and the Gulf War. Ahmed was uh, quietly eating his breakfast in a trench outside the brigade HQ when the unexpected explosion erupted near him. In a moment, while his world was went quiet, he was trying to realize what had happened. He could see the people in civilian clothes with guns opening fire on the brigade HQ. He could also see his fellow soldiers firing back or getting killed in the process, but he just stood there. Almost like he was frozen in time until his fellow soldier pulled him down into the trench. He couldn't see much, but he could hear an intense firefight. And it probably lasted less than 10 minutes, but 10 minutes seemed like an eternity. And then it stopped. The terrorists ran away on the pickup trucks. They were Kurdish terrorists again. It almost seemed like the northern region of Iraq could never catch a break. Ahmad Ahmed just stared into the distance until a soldier beside him finally spoke, Welcome to Hell, son. Olympic Games. And where? Iraqi Kurdistan? Defenses. And 
Yoraki Kurdistan. Well, we could try. Hey, you popped another division. Great job, guys. Ahmad Hashim, you're learning, which is great. And we're fighting into the mountains, which sucks. We have an agency now. You're out of organization strength, huh? We'll get your rug up, and I'll do it again. More armed forces in Kurdistan. After looking at the Kurdish strong points, Saddam and his high command decided that the time has come to increase the Iraqi armed forces in the Kurdistan region. With the troops ready, the Kurdish terrorists will not be able to be a great threat. This is another step towards the total destruction of the Kurdish ethnic group and their nation in Iraq. Oh, ever since the creation of our nation, the Kurdish rebels entrenched in north, the north have been cons causing mass instability. From the 60s, when they first rebelled, to the 80s, when they first cost us the war against Iran. We no longer tolerate this, but combining all our efforts will crush the Kurdish rebels. That's right. Uh, Congo, Liberian War. How's the Liberian War going? Oh. Uh huh. Liberian rebel forces versus these guys, which we probably prefer. We'll see what happens next. We will watch this with great interest, or I'll forget about watching them. One of those two, probably. Close that one for now. That's fine. Hmm. Estimate twenty-five percent. Progress of eliminating them. Bomb the mountains. Okay. Deport the Kurds. Start military operations. Use direct military force for other operations. Imprison separatist activists. Reinforce the border guards. Crack down underground network. Resistance increases. All right, so we got to station some guys here. So how many do we need here? At least two divisions. And well, we can just do it like this. Boop. Spread out. Oh, and Nineveh. Mosul. Ah, oh, there it is. Big amount. That's fine. Decrease by minimum amount. Ooh. So everything's got to go towards this then. Oh, do we win? Should have been paying attention. I guess we won. Oh, look at that. Nice job, guys. Oh. Republic of Liberia. He's in one. Well, let's see what happens here. Saddam. Welcome back to Africa. Um, for us, we don't really have that many tanks. I mean... We have a lot of infantry. Actually, we do have quite a few tanks. These things divisions actually are halfway decent, too. Screw it, we're gonna go mobile warfare. If he can go here and cut him off. Oh, look at that. Oh, whoops. And Golden Civil War. Wait. You need to want MPL. Oh, oh. Huh. Interesting. Well, we're doing a little better now. We made sure that the Republic of Angola actually won, and we're doing okay down here too, but we just finished special operations. After increasing the military strength in Kurdistan and looking at the strong points, the time has come to start special operations aimed at isolating the Kurdish population and exterminating anyone who possesses or opposes the armed forces and Saddam. Thanks to these operations, the Kurdish independence movement will lose influence, even among the Iraqi supporters, while the Kurdish minorities will be forced to emigrate to other countries or face the Iraqi armed forces and their... Uh, <clears throat> Um, suppress the Kurds. After various times, Saddam Hussein has decided that the time has come to oppress the Kurdish minority in the worst possible way. The armed forces from now will be able to uh, um, uh, remove anyone from opposing the government. All ethnic Kurds in Iraq will be uh, <clears throat> oppressed, and any rebels will be uh, get get rid of, get, get rid of, uh, removed until they are integrated perfectly into Iraq, or that they disappear completely from it. Thanks to the actions, Saddam has increased his consensus among Iraqi nationalists. <laughs> Fantastic, look what happens. God, I'm gonna get a second strike. And then we cannot have, uh, there's not a national spirit, no fly zones. So, so we really gotta crack down on the snow fly zone stuff. So, right now we're at 50%, and we're still working on quite a bit of this stuff here, too. Um, what happened to the no fly zone? Oh, did I not even do it yet? Oh, whoops. Oops, I forgot to do these. Whoopsie. 
Well, we wanted to focus really heavily on Iraq really fast, so. So up here, medium, medium, and a big amount. Doesn't say Olympics, Deport, Deporto. Let's see what happens first. I'm waiting down here too, which is nice. Crack down? Oh, you betcha. That loses a lot of political power up, though. Um, there's not much you can do here, but we're actually doing really well here now, finally, thank God. We have no generals, unfortunately. Because they're all busy, well, I guess... Oh, never mind. Saddam's here. You know what? He wants to lead it personally himself. In the jungles of Africa, we go. Um, we're doing okay there. Yeah, other than that, we're doing alright. 50%. 100%. Nice! Good job, guys. So, now what? Well, I guess we gotta go back in this one, because I forgot to do it, doing this stuff. Uh, so is it just gonna go up and down all the time now? That kinda sucks. Yeah, army XP, more army XP. We could depopulate this entire area, maybe. It's a 60%, which is not very good. Um, maybe we should have waited to do all this stuff? You know what, let him frickin' rebel. Okay, so it's gonna be stuck there forever, pretty much, then. So if that's the case, Republicans re-elected, huh? Well, Alright. So we gotta go through this one. Pugo elected, yeah. Utilize the Air Force? No fly zones, okay. Alright, so let's go back to this stuff. One, two, three, one, two, three. Doesn't have natural spirit, no fly zones. God dang it. So basically, you need to wait to do this then. Because this is just going to be a drain on what we have here, constantly. Yeah, we're going to have definitely them rebel. So be it. Get ready for war. Um, that's, that's, eh. I know this mod's going to get reworked anyways, eventually. God dang it. So what happens when they rebel? Then can I just get crushed in that way? Oh, that goes about a bitch off. You guys, yeah, you're high, you're high, good. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do anything there. How about Liberia? Yeah, it's gonna be a stalemate for a while now. It's kinda dumb. Well, so be it. Uh, lessons from Desert Storm. I think I want to go We Rule the Skies the best we can. Construct new power plants. I like that one. Increase oil production is freaking insane, though. I mean, that's so much more fuel. I mean, we have so much anyways, but I guess... Let's go with uh, Construct New Power Plants. Over the last few years, the demand for electricity has greatly increased with the thinner nation. However, our electrical output has not been scaled up as a result, with many older power plants experiencing regular failures and maintenance issues. This weakens our industrial capabilities, as factories are unable to efficiently produce products if regular power outages occur. By constructing new modern power plants, we can lessen the strain on existing plants, allowing for much new repairs to take place while electrical output is still increased. Let's let them rebel. See what happens. Happy January 1st, everybody. Oh, nothing bad happens in 2001. Oh, look at that. So, how much resistance do you have now? 69. End of the Uncoming War. Look at that. Yay. Yay. I'm not sure why that kicks off at the same time. By a big amount. A mega amount. Liberian Civil War. Well, it looks like... Uh... Republic, Liberian government is fine. Congo War. People's Republic of the Congo, they won there. 
It looks like you guys are gonna lose. So R C D. Cassandra faction. So if you don't know about this one, please go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna assume Democratic Republic of Congo. That's a that's a normal government. Um, R C D Katsanga. How many volunteers can we send? Two volunteers. Oh, we got two right there. Look at that. Um, I don't want to send those two though. Welcome to Africa. God, we love Africa, don't we? I get more army XP that way too. Um, oh, oh, I guess I never got this guy. There. That's out a smidgen. I'll oh, please don't force the attack now. Let's not make too many mistakes like this. 57 days. It's been 57 long, dark days since the outage started. The explosions of gunfire a decade ago had left our neighborhoods in ruins, and electricity had in and out been in and out since it first started. Since the first attack, really. As I sat in the darkened room, I couldn't help but feel a sense of hopelessness wash over me. It seemed like the outages would never end, and we would be trapped in the cycle of darkness forever. But, on then, on the 57th day, something had miraculous happened. As I was sitting in the living room with my family, I heard a faint humming and sound in the distance. It grew louder and louder until suddenly the lights flickered on. Well, I jumped up from our seats and ran to the windows, trying to see where the sound was coming from. And there it was, a team of workers, pulling up to our neighborhood in a truck loaded with generators and power lines. Over the next few hours, the workers methodically set up the generators and restored power to our neighborhood. It was a slow process, but as each hour, each house came back to life, a sense of hope began to spread throughout the community. As night fell and the generators hummed in the background, my family and I sat together in the living room, finally able to enjoy the comfort of light and electricity once again. It was a small victory, but it meant the world to us. For the first time in 57 days, I felt a glimmer of hope that things might one day return to normal. And although the bombings and destruction may have left their mark on our neighborhood, I knew that we were strong and resilient and that we would rebuild and arise from the ashes. The Iraqi people rise from the ashes with perseverance and resilience. I consider alternative trade partners. After carrying out the reforms, the government has decided to make the decision to carry out exporting products made in Iraq to other countries as well and try to replace the current trading partners. Since the 1990s, uh, the Iraqi economy has always gone from bad to worse, accumulating so many debts that we still have to finish paying today. So in order not to declare bankruptcy, we had to continue exporting products to Western countries. Now thanks to economic reform, we are managing to keep the economy afloat just long enough to find new trading partners. What is this? In Iraqi Kurdistan, 42%, 54%. Volunteers, how are we doing? Could you win here? Probably not. With help of the militia, I mean, it's a. Uh, he's learning. And that's the most important thing. Oh, but now we got even more support. So maybe? Maybe not. Moving away from the dollar. For several years now, we've been trading with Western nations using dollars, which are a widely used currency of our trading partners. Now that we're replacing our partners, though, we must move away from the dollar and exchange it for another trading currency, which we must use to exchange with the new business partners. Nice. Uh huh. 60% chance. 66. Well, we'll try it. You know what? We'll all risk both. We've got enough air support. And medium amount. Well, I like the arm XP. The arm XP is actually very nice. And we can help lower resistance this way too. Once we hire somebody or two. 15 and 1, not bad. Um is anyone in the center? No? Well, it's us now. Well, Sometimes all you need is just more divisions. Air supremacy operations failed. Oh crap. Despite the valiant efforts of our pilots, and successful. Our attempt to establish air superiority has failed. Crap. Coalition pilots, seemingly unfazed by our attempts, managed to respond with a significant force, shooting down a significant number of our aircraft and causing the rest to flee deeply in friendly territory. Due to the loss we sustained, we would not be able to perform significant air operations in the region for some time while we regain or regather our forces. Unfortunate. Now, this one's successful. Our preparations and hard work have paid off with the Air Force managing to deal a critical blow to coalition air operations in the region. 
Well, this wheeler is somewhat good. Although the coalition forces avoided any losses, due to the well-trained pilots and command network, several of the aircraft were damaged, while the rest were forced to retreat into areas with more support. Those likely they'll attempt to regain the air superiority of this region in the future. For now, their operators, our operations have been greatly reduced. Oh god. Hit him where it hurts. Well. Well, we're looking pretty decent overall. So. Can we continue to do this or what? More political power would be pretty good. Finance a regime. Yeah. Exploit oil for food pay program. Savage 1995. The oil for food program allowed us to sell oil in exchange for humanitarian resources for our citizens. While still limiting our potential military capabilities. Careful tactics. We could try and siphon off more money than we would otherwise normally get and allocate it to more important sectors. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you guys are kind of screwed here. Yeah, there's nothing much you can really do there, which sucks. But we're doing quite well down here. Actually, if anything, you want to probably go here first. That would be great. Karim? I like Karim. Ooh, Salim. Umar? I want Salim. There you go. Now you should really be able to put down quite a bit of resistance. Or it's the same amount. Okay, then. What is this? 60%, 40% chance. Boop. Boop. And then, we can support the Iraqi people, but let's be real here. Finance a regime. The Ba'ath party has always stood behind a great leader Saddam Hussein, even when our own people attempted to revolt. To keep them loyal and reward them for their efforts, we can funnel money into the pockets of politicians, advisors, and military leaders, further spending the power of the party. Of course. Why would we not? We can try it. Airspace has been lost, but we'll see. 60% chance, come on. Ah! Interesting. Hey, it's been successful, yay! We're looking much better now. Can you stop this whole resistance thing? I'm gonna take the, I'll, I will gladly take the army speed, still. Good. And forget about our debts. That's right. For many years now, debts have been transporting Iraq and its government to ruin. It's evident that we will not be able to pay them. Even if we do manage to pay them, we have an economic crisis. Both in cases, we cannot continue to carry the economy forward in this way. The government has decided now to deny the payment of all debts and ignore them. We will not spend even a single penny to pay the debts that our enemies have caused us. That's right. That's how it works here. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. Liberia, you're probably going to get attacked eventually. We'll see. Hello? Oh. He's going to. Yay! Yeah. So how bad is it? They're gonna rebel anyway, so who cares, right? Hey! Welcome back, guys. Forget about those deaths. They don't exist. Um, complete the Baghdad Metro. Saddam Hussein launched a huge, expansive project in 1983, building the Baghdad Metro to alleviate traffic congestion on the surface roads and streets. Almost two decades later, the project is at near standstill, with kilometers of unfished tunnels and stations littered around our capital. Eventually, the long way of Metro will undoubtedly boost Saddam's popularity with the populace while providing legitimate benefits in the form of alleviating surface traffic. Yay! Hey, South African War! Yay! Another war we can involve ourselves in. Oh boy. 75% is not bad. South African War propaganda machine. Um, sure, why not? So, who do we like more? You or you? We don't care about either one. Republic of South Africa. Apartheid. Military controlled state, which we do like. But these people. Hmm. Hmm. I bet you'd have to fight them all fast enough. Oh, we'll see. We'll head your bets against whoever. And of course, we're embargoed, but whatever. We don't care. How tragic. Because they're going to be supported by the other side, or no? You're supported by these guys. 
Namibia, Madagascar. Some better guns, maybe, yeah. So we're going to support this side. I mean, it doesn't matter to us. I mean, we're going to support either side because we don't really care. Let's see what we can do. Hey, we're successful. Yay. All right, so what do we got here? Probably we'll have our division truck call because it's probably 80%. Oh, we're getting close, though. Actually, how much is it? How high is it? 0.1 still. All right, so now what do we got? Reposition air defenses. We're conducting certain repositioning of our air defenses. Any intelligence that coalition forces might be relying upon will become outdated. Uh, place decoy air defenses. The same with various high quality decoys across the region. So hopefully, fool coalition pilots into wasting their ordnance on decoys instead of actual equipment. Barrier aircraft. The air base will no doubt be targeted in the upcoming coalition assault. By burying our most important aircraft in the desert, we'll be able to avoid destruction. Oh, launch air superiority operations in Al Basra. So, yeah. Everything's really good except for down there. We can task our jet fighters with contesting coalition aircraft in the area. If we do this without having a significant air defense and intelligence coverage in the region, we'll suffer heavy losses. So, create new air defenses, yeah. As well as expand intelligence down there. Yeah, there you go. Coalition campaign. We receive intelligence that our coalition airports are planning a major air assault for targeting the southern Iraqi region. If they succeed, we'll lose a significant number of assets in the area, which will take time to rebuild. Ooh. 52% chance of getting a burning eagle. Air defense in the region decreases in capability. Oh god. A painful wound. Airspace in the region decreases in safety. And everything else. Oh god. They're bombing us! Painful wound. Despite our best efforts, it appears that we were not successful in deceiving coalition air forces during the recent assault. Launching. Several precise raids deep in our airspace. Our aircraft managed to evade our air defenses and perform several key strikes across southern Iraq. So it disabled significant portions of our radar and air defense network in the region. And several of our air bases suffered significant aircraft losses. Suffice to say, for now, we've lost air supremacy within the region. We'll get a revenge. Thank God it only takes command power. Oh, how are we doing down here? The Baghdad Metro, of course. This morning as usual. I woke up and then went to the kitchen to make me coffee, and whilst I waited to pass the time, I leaped through the newspaper. I read the first article, and began to sip the coffee I made. As soon as I turn the page, the first news I see is, The Baghdad Metro has been inaugurated after almost 20 years of construction. When I read that article, I almost spat out my coffee in amazement. And at that moment, I was very curious to see what the metro was like, so I decided to go there just to have a look. After a 10 minute walk, I arrived at the subway. At that moment, it looked like I was in London. That place full of life, people talking, while others were waiting for the train. I waited for some time, still bewildered by the place. The subway itself was very colorful, the walls full of images, full of images of Saddam, his actions, and the great battles that Iraq fought bravely. While I got distracted looking at the paintings on the walls, the train arrives without even thinking about I enter and take a seat. Inside the train, there was many people, and all very cheerfully talking to each other, and while I was thinking about it in less than 10 minutes, I arrived at my destination. I was very amazed. The fastest train we had took 30 minutes just to leave. In any case, I decided to get off the train because I did not want to get too far from my house, so I simply wait for another train to return to the station I left from. And while I wait, I noticed that in each station, there are different images that portray other monuments, and some portray the history of Baghdad. I love the metro. How many people actually love the metro? For, forgive the people of Basra. Expand the Um Kasir port. Or forgive them. Hmm. Or this one. Being our only deep water port, Um Kassar has handles a significant portion of our commerce via the Gulf, unlike other major ports. Or the other major port. Um Kassar is significantly less vulnerable to foreign invention, being further away from our hostile Iranian neighbors and having near direct access to the Persian Gulf. It would be foolish not to expand upon such a location, one which has already attracted multiple foreign companies in trade. That's right. So what is the resistance like now? Eighty percent? 
81%. Okay, so we're gonna have a rebellion. That's fine, whatever. Kurdistan rebels. Despite the research support and anti resistance operations, our attempts are suppressing Kurdish resistance has utterly failed. Barjani, along today, along with other Kurdish groups, have declared an independent Kurdistan state of the northern regions of Iraq. You are going to burn. Oh, Saddam. It's fine. And here, anything else we really care about? Construction speed's not bad. I wouldn't mind getting to early mobile, maybe. Oh, you the Air Force. Oh. Where is this one from? Um, okay. For now, only the ground armed forces are participating in the Kurdish extermination operations. The High Command has also proposed to use the Air Force to obtain air support and bomb the areas where the, there's more Kurdish population in their last strong points. So also speed up the conflict. We would have fewer losses and more time to recognize or reorganize the armed forces and economy. The Kurds will have two choices, submit to the Iraq and its government or total extermination. Mission accomplished. Finally, after the months of fighting, battles, and blood, Iraq finally triumphed for the Kurdish rebels. I would magically completely exterminate them from Iraq. With their triumph, most of the problems related to the Kurdish terrorism has vanished. For victory, we must thank the brave Iraqi soldiers, his air force, and the great leader, Saddam Hussein. Glory to Iraq, and glory to Saddam. That's right. Yeah, I do want to get rid of you, though. Eventually. Well, that's what you get. What you freaking deserve. Anyways, no. There you go. And we're going to back down to South Africa. Welcome back. It's like you never left. All you do is travel between the two points. Oh boy. Right down here seems probably seems like a pain in the butt. You can try it. Uh, it sucks that we gotta fight him back again and again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's dumb. Whatever. We do what we can. Protest in Basra. Not even a week passed, and already the situation in Basra is getting worse. The whole city and population of Basra is in turmoil. Not a day goes by without a protest. The streets full of citizens disappointed by Saddam's government. It almost seems to have returned to 91 on that fateful day. The whole city has been suffering for years now, from scarce quantities of goods, and the government doesn't seem to care. The only thing they care about is being brass, bringing Iraq to the top of the rope of all that happened to here. Us. Here. The whole city, although it's ailing, is firmly united against Saddam and his punishment. That's the second time I've heard the whole city agree on something and it's to oust Saddam from the government. Thanks to all of these protests, not even to take a simple walk in the streets or in the park is pleasant. The only thing clearly heard is Saddam's name. I just wish to be elsewhere except here. Well, maybe you shouldn't have been bombed. You know, whatever. Uh, we're definitely going to increase oil production. The vast oil fields in which we sit on have provided us with money and power for decades, while the rest of our nation is a barren desert. It only makes sense to continue to exploit this resource, especially as the demand for oil continues to increase globally and modern refineries. Sanctions and a general lack of care and maintenance have left our oil and infrastructure in poor condition. While the rest of the world, relying on our exports, is our almost priority to repair and modernize this infrastructure, as well as building refineries that are fit for the 21st century. So, we're going to end it there. We're doing alright as Iraq. We're doing pretty well. Um, I definitely want to get rid of you. And go down here because it gives us more consumer goods, makes us build faster. I think that's just a smart choice overall. Look at that. Ten. Well, whatever. Oh, look at that. We were successful there. That's great. So if you enjoyed the first video of us playing as Saddam before I get to Monica's and get another strike, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. How's it still going on? And I will see you tomorrow as we continue on with the Republic of Iraq. Thanks for watching. Have a great Saddam Rostov. Your day.